The clerk will report the amendment. Amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to HR 2794 offered by Ms. Clark. Without objection, the reading is dispensed with. The gentleman uh, is recognized for five minutes. I'm sorry. Yes. Gentlewoman, I'm sorry. The Committee on Homeland Security has a long history of bipartisan and cooperation among its members, and that has been reflected in the numerous pieces of bipartisan legislation advanced by this committee in previous Congresses. Unfortunately, that spirit of collaboration is not reflected in the legislation before us today. In addition to being poorly conceived, this bill falls well short of addressing the real issues at the border and instead would resume work on former President Trump's wasteful, ineffective border wall, weaken CBP hiring standards, cuts off funding for NGOs doing important work and closes pathways to both asylum and other forms of legal immigration. And amazingly, this bill seeks to do all that without even addressing the root causes of migration to our country. While one amendment cannot fix all the plagues this, of this bill, my amendment would address one of the primary factors exacerbating global migration trends, climate change. Since 1980, the United States has sustained over 300 climate-related catastrophic events, including but not limited to hurricanes, flooding, droughts, and wildfires. And as temperatures continue to rise, the number of such extreme events will only increase in frequency and severity. No corner of this country is immune from the impacts of climate change. Already, millions in the United States have been uprooted due to severe climate-related events. In 2022, roughly 3.4 million people were displaced by a hurricane flood or other disasters. Globally, we have seen climate change contribute to instability and conflict. In November of 2020, we saw two back-to-back -back hurricanes affect more than 7.5 million Central Americans and Caribbeans, leaving many displaced and experiencing loss of livelihoods. Landslides, flash floods displaced thousands while homes and agricultural crops were destroyed. This displacement has been a recognized driver of migration northward. According to the World Bank, Latin America, South Asia, and Sub-Saharan Africa could produce one 143 million climate migrants by the year 2050. Ignoring the implications of climate change and its connections to migration is not an option. That is why I think that this legislation is the appropriate place for us to authorize climate change research at the department. The connection between climate events and the strains put on the Southwest border are undeniable. My amendment, which is based on a bill that passed the House by voice vote in the 116th Congress, requires DHS to assess the current federal research regarding any potential or identified effects of climate change on homeland security and authorizes the Science and Technology Directorate to research and develop approaches such effects have on homeland security. I urge my colleagues to join me in supporting this amendment to help DHS mitigate climate change challenges to effectively carry out its diverse range of Homeland Security missions. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Gentleman, gentlewoman uh, yields back. Does Mr. the gentleman Chairman. insist on the point of order? No, sir, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to withdraw my point of order. Point of order is withdrawn. Does any member wish to speak on the amendment? The chair recognizes Ms. Green from uh, Georgia. The United States spends over $50 billion U.S. dollars in economic and military assistance to foreign countries. The American taxpayers send their money to countries all over the world. The question to ask is, what do these foreign countries do with our hard-earned tax dollars? The climate has been changing since the beginning of time. That is a scientific fact. 
The climate will continue changing. At what point, the question is, is at what point does that mean that every single person from all over the world can just come into America because the climate is changing? We also have hurricanes, we have tornadoes, we have earthquakes. We have our own climate disasters in the United States. Everyone in the world experiences these things. But with over $50 billion in foreign aid, you would think that these foreign country, these leaders and these governments would figure out a way to help their people with these problems. They could make the living conditions, their economies, their crime problems, everything they face in their countries, they could fix with our hard-earned tax dollars. Climate change is not a reason to just allow anyone and everyone to come into the United States of America. It is absolutely absurd. And you have to be, I would think it's pretty difficult for most people. Most people don't buy the climate hoax. It's a hoax because a lot of people make money on climate change. And people are not affecting climate change. You're gonna tell me that back in the ice age, how much taxes did people pay and how many changes did governments make to melt the ice? The climate is going to continue to change. And there is no reason to just open up our borders and allow everyone in and continue to funnel over $50 billion or however many billions of dollars or trillions of dollars to foreign countries all over the world simply because they don't like the climate change. Mr. Chairman, Will the I yield. General Lady yield. I yield back my time, Mr. Chairman. General Lady uh, yields. I uh, the chair recognizes Mr. Goldman. I just had a question for uh, my colleague from Georgia. Uh, is your objection to this amendment that uh, climate change doesn't exist or that we should not allow refugees in due to climate change? Mr. Goldman, I don't think you were listening to me very well. I said climate change has been happening since the beginning of time. Okay, I reclaim my time because I, I thought you said uh, it's the climate hoax or something along those lines. This right but, here, this amendment is a hoax. Letting people in our country right, because the climate is changing Order. is a hoax. I reclaim Ms. my Green. time. Yeah, this Green. is a Ms. hoax, Green. Mr. Oh. Goldman. Ms. Green, he's reclaiming his time. M Mr. Chairman, I, I think what this amendment is uh, importantly getting at is, of course, not to allow anyone who claims that they have had been impacted by climate change to come into this country, but rather to analyze and do what is the title of the amendment, research and development on the impact of climate change on migration issues <clears throat> and on refugees uh, who have to escape the horrific impacts of the scientific fact of climate change. So let's focus on this amendment and recognize that as the as climate change as our earth burns, as climate change increases, that is going to have a disruptive impact on communities, countries, places around the world, and we ought to be evaluating uh, those impacts and how our immigration and our borders should react to them. I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Uh, the chair now recognizes the gentleman from Mississippi, Mr. Guest. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I'll be brief so that we can move on. I'd just like to point out that the uh, last two uh, amendments that have been offered uh, don't deal with border security. They deal with challenge coins and climate change. Uh, we're here with a border security bill. We're here trying to make sure that we're hiring additional CBP officers, that we're investing in technology, that we're supporting our federal and state partners, that we're paying retention bonuses to members of the CBP. Uh, and the last two amendments, and maybe it's because it's late in the evening and maybe it's because everyone's tired and we're ready to go home, uh, but we're talking about challenge coins and climate change uh, and a markup dealing with a piece of legislation that addresses border security. Uh, so I intend to vote against this amendment, uh, and I would encourage my colleagues to do the same, and I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Does any other member wish to speak on the amendment? Mr. Chairman. 
Yeah. Mr. Magaziner. Uh, I'll just say this is very relevant to border security. If we are going to understand and anticipate migration patterns into the United States at the border and otherwise, we need to know where people are going to be coming from and why. And, you know, the gentleman from Georgia falsely called climate change a hoax and said that, I guess, implied that human activity has nothing to do with it. But even setting that aside, the climate is changing. People are having to migrate as a result. And for us to anticipate that is very relevant to securing the borders of this country. And I want to thank Ms. Clark for introducing this amendment. It is germane, it is relevant, and it also does no harm whatsoever to include this study in the bill. Where's the harm in it? So I'd, I'd urge my colleagues to support it, and uh, I yield the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back. Does any other member wish to speak on the amendment? Mr. Chairman, move to strike the last word. The chair recognizes the member from, uh, from Texas, uh, Mr. Pfluger. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, in the time that we talked about challenge coins, if you take just the average number that DHS has been reporting of about 200,000 illegal immigrants per month, that's what they've been reporting. That's an, an average for the last two months. I see my colleagues rolling their eyes. That's fine. Just an average, in the time that we talked about coins, 277 illegal immigrants entered the country. So once again, here we are. We, we asked the secretary last week, and we have asked him previously many questions. And the secretary, according to my colleague, Mr. Payne, was given a letter by Chairman Thompson in July of 2022 on the coins, and he can't even respond to, to the letter about coins. And now we're going to put DHS in charge of climate change and get a report from them on climate change? I, I'm sorry. Let's deal with the problem that we have right now. The problem that we have right now is 200,000 people illegally entering our country a month. The problem that we have right now is the fact that we have 193 people in the last two years that have matched the terror watch list, a million and a half known gotaways. That's what this bill addresses. The distractions, whether they be coins or climate change, the American public is not buying it. They're not buying it. The family that talked to Secretary Mayorkas last week said, we don't care Republican or Democrat, go solve the problem. They want action to be taken. This is a distraction. I yield back. Gentleman uh, yields back. Does any other member wish to speak on the amendment? Chairman, I'd like to be recognized. The chair uh, recognizes the general lady from Illinois. Thank you, Chairman. I'd like to just speak in favor of this amendment. Um, presented by the Congresswoman from Brooklyn, New York. What this amendment does is ask for a report. We've been talking about 200,000 people, 300,000 people, 187 in the last 10 minutes. Well, we're policy people, so we should be asking ourselves the question, what is the root cause of problems? And that, to me, is germane to this body. If we are not asking ourselves what is forcing people to leave their small villages and nearly die, bringing their children, children that I personally know, I personally know, I'm related to, and you're not asking yourself, why is it that there's 100,000 more people after the pandemic? Why is it that there's 200,000 more people? Ask yourself the question why, because if we want to be planning accordingly, to the impact we're going to have, we should be doing the work to assess what is happening in the world that is causing so many people to migrate from all over the world 
to Canada, to the US, and to other places. So I think that her amendment is absolutely germane. This is not saying that we're going to solve climate change. We know the difference between solving climate change and issuing a report and understanding what is happening in the climate impact that is causing people from Central America, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, Salvador, Panama, and the Caribbean that brings people here. Children that we say we care about. Children that are dying on the Mexico side of the border. So I want to say that issuing a report should not be something we're fighting for, over. Issuing a report and actually getting the data is going to make us better legislators, better lawmakers. So I absolutely support this amendment. And I urge my colleagues on both sides of the aisles to do our job, to do the legislative work of actually understanding what moves people to our borders and how we address it. Chairman, I yield back. General Lady uh, yields back. Does anybody, uh, any other member wish to speak on the amendment? Mr. Luttrell, you're recognized. Which, which department or whom inside of Homeland Security will be conducting the parallel research? Inside Homeland, would it, would it be more advantageous for Science and Technology Committee to do this in, in parallel? We have a projected dollar amount on these research. I yield back, sir. Gentleman yields back. Does any other member wish to uh, speak on the amendment? The chair will recognize himself for about five minutes. Uh, the problem that I have with this, uh, with this amendment is not that you're asking for a study on climate change. The, the, the problem that I have is you assume that climate change is the reason. I don't believe that the people uh, fleeing Syria, I don't believe climate change is the reason why they're fleeing Syria. I think they have, they're fleeing bullets and bombs. People that are fleeing Cuba, I don't think it's about climate change. It's about oppression and communism and socialism. People that are fleeing Venezuela, it's not about climate change. It's about oppression, again, being oppressed. People that are fleeing, probably will be fleeing Colombia pretty soon. And it won't be because of climate change. It's because they're seeking a better opportunity or they don't have an economic opportunity in their homes. The problem with this is that you assume it's climate change. If you want to find the core reasons for immigration, I may be willing to vote for it, but I'm not getting ready to assume that it's because of climate change. Climate may be a factor in some areas, but most of the migration, most of the migration, and by the way, climate has been changing forever. Most of the migration happens because of e economics, hardships, that's what happened. War, that's why people leave. Or oppression, that's why people leave. Uh, and so with that, does any other member wish to speak on this amendment? Gentlemen, you. I will yield, I will yield part of my time. Yes, ma'am. Um, just an informational point. There was a, a great deal of migration from El Salvador when they had a national natural disaster. I think Guatemala had natural disasters. So there's evidence that uh, natural disasters have driven people away from home. So I don't think that's completely correct. And I think the idea of the general lady's uh, research is to determine, it's not a statement on whether you believe in climate change or not. It is a statement that doesn't have an impact on the issue that we're speaking of, which is migration. Uh, and certainly um, for those of us who uh, visited Haiti after the um, horrific uh, earthquake, um, clearly devastating practically all of the island. There was a great movement of people and it, it hasn't regressed. The problem is it's compounded by instability in government, but certainly the earthquake, uh, which was word catastrophic is not even appropriate, it was unspeakable, uh, created a lot of movement of people. So I think the, if we can just look at this from the context of what drives people out of their country to ours, then it is a legitimate amendment and legitimately placed to do the research to give us that kind of knowledge. Does that compound migration? Is there something that we can do? Um, can we send more resources to those nations uh, to stop the uh, devastation so that people won't leave? 
you know, Puerto Rico is a commonwealth, but they've had a series of, of, uh, of disasters. And although they're part of the United States, many of them left Puerto Rico to come to the mainland, if you will. It does have some basis, uh, Mr. Chairman, and I'll yield back. Um, natural disasters, I, I, I agree. Uh, a, uh, an earthquake, I don't think, is part of climate change. Um, earthquakes happen, uh, and it's got nothing to do with the climate. But in, in any way, to assume that somehow that that is the driving force uh, around the world, I will disagree with that. Um, it, is it a factor? And I, and I said in my, my statement that it is a factor, but it's not the factor. So with that, uh, my time is up. I will yield back. Does anybody else, does any other member wish to speak on the amendment? There being no further discussion, the question now occurs on the amendment offered by Ms. Clark. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. 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 In the opinion of the chair, the no's have it, and the amendment is not adopted. Mr. Chairman, on that, I ask for a recorded vote. A recorded vote is, uh, is requested. Um, pursuant to committee rule 7C, further proceedings on this question uh, is postponed.